Hey, it's David. I'm here at Caskets and Moore on Walton Way in beautiful downtown Augusta, Georgia. The heart of the CSRA. Let's go inside and take a look at what's going they got going on. Look at this truck. That's pretty cool. We got a crane. Imagine they do a lot of heavy lifting. They're closed right now, but they're in here doing work for us. Hey guys. Howdy. That's Jonathan. I'm Jonathan. Well, who's that? This is Irene. Irene. And that's B Rad Brad Hubbard. Yes, He's been cutting face shield material for us. Indeed. Why don't you go over there and show us what we got? I'm going to take a hit first. <laughs> Look at this. So there's your 1,800 pounds of plastic. One ton of plastic. Probably about 1775 by now. Well, let's. Yeah. No, that box is up front, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, we cut maybe 25 pounds. Yeah, there. maybe. About and that, work today was maybe 25 pounds. But isn't that crazy? Under 200, I, I can't tell you how many people went and were involved in making this happen because we don't know how many people oh, were involved. Gosh. I'm sure a ton of people, we know of a bunch already, but before we thank everybody, we want to know everybody that's involved so we can give everybody credit. Absolutely. But what were your thoughts when we said last night, hey, oh. can you cut some plastic for us? It's incredible just the amount of, of speed that was used here. Yeah, it went we went from yesterday evening after business hours, like 5 36 o'clock, going, Yeah, we can cut something. How quick can you get it here? to literally 11 30, the truck rolling in with that today. Yeah, like uh, 12 hours later, 12 hours yeah. on a weekend, right? So, hats off to whoever donated Coke or whoever donated that. That's incredible. The shipping and everything was incredible. And and this, this right here, this is why the money that people are donating for the cause is so important. Money made this happen. Absolutely. The next day. This wouldn't have happened without that money. Well, so, same, for, same for people that are still donating, wondering you know, right. how things are going. We can give of our time. We can even give and utilize equipment. Right. Like equipment breaks. Like we had things right. break today. Yeah. So they had this. They, so this, <laughs> I imagine this is something you use every day it is. for your line of work. That's why you just have it laying around. Yeah. Uh, who has a crane just laying around? So he was lifting this plastic, and it broke his thing. So he had to go and buy material. Yeah, well, this was, yeah, this was my chain that I had. So I grabbed my chain out so we could hook it up. But that's got to get replaced. Yeah. You know, so so that that this is what it's for. So the, this big, expensive laser cutter, which is probably only so many of these in the area. Well, this is the only one. This area. is the only one in the area this size. So... You're going to burn up something on this thing. Oh yeah, well, the laser we'll or something. The laser tube when we're all done. How much is a laser tube? Right around three fifty to four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars, and so that laser tube's just going to be no good, just because he was making face shields for us. So we're going to have to buy him a new laser tube, and that's fine because you folks are allowing us to do that. Uh, so show us some of the process. What? What? How does this work? Sure. So ultimately, this roll gets lifted. And you can see we've got some fed here. So like as we pull a little bit off, I think we could probably unspool some now. Yeah. All right. You clear? Yep. All right. We lift it up an inch or two. And we go backwards with it because it's much easier to unroll it this way. Say that one more time. So we unroll it backwards rather than rotating the spool just because I gotcha. of the weight. So we'll flip out a big batch of it like this. Oh, that's getting me. Down. Uh, oh. All right, easier down. Good. Wow, look yeah. how thick that stuff is. Yeah, I'm clear. Yep. Right. So we'll have a roll like this. Again, we feed it into the laser. All right, so it comes out on the inside, I imagine, right? Yep. Feed it in. And then we've just created some very simple registration marks. Here. Take a little bit of woodworking production skills, of stop blocks, and reference guides. Yeah. Set it up. And then just really simple low tech magnets and paper towels. Pin it down. Run the file. So it's just pinning it down with some magnets? Yeah, just so it doesn't slide. Right, right, right. And then run the. Because I imagine it's really hard to work with. I mean, it's, it's not the simplest stuff in the world. More of the issue comes from getting it off the roll because normally this would be on an auto feeder that can handle, you know, a 
two thousand pound roll and it'll just turn the roll and right, right, right. There's no manual like labor involved. In like it. if we weren't just trying to haphazardly make face yeah. shields, like if we're actual manufacturer, yeah. we there's, there's no risk in like you know. Look at that, he's already making some. Look at that. Yeah, so we just line it up. So is this what the moor and caskets and moor is? <laughs> this is the moor. Saving the world. And more for yeah. sure. So caskets and saving the world. It's the beyond a bit that and beyond. So, <laughs> so tell me a little bit about Brad. Brad. So Brad has a company in Augusta. Yep. So this is me, the Naughty Log. Um, yep. Yep. What do you do? So I'm a furniture and cabinet maker here. Um, I specialize in luxury and high-end furniture. Okay. And just being in the making realm, I bought a 3D printer a while back, played with that, and then we were able to make the connection with you, David and found out that, hey, there's a pretty big need for some of these things that we made on 3D printer. The need was stressed that, hey, we need, somebody has a laser cutter. Well, I've had Jonathan as, right. as my vendor. For all, all I did was say, hey, man, you want to help? Do you have a laser cutter? I was like, and then no, this happened. But I got, a, I got a vendor that's got an industrial level one. Right. So a business <laughs> connection that I've you know had for a couple of months now, we were able to leverage that. And then we went from you know three guys trying to figure out how to make 10 of these to like, Oh crap! We can make like a couple thousand of these. Yeah. So, so, so like this, this, this spool should be able to make how many? You think? Oh, at least fifty-five hundred. So we fifty-five hundred. That's five thousand five hundred. Yeah. So we get out of a thirty-six inch run, so three foot run, we get twelve, and there's twenty-eight hundred and seventy linear feet of this. Yeah. So I don't do math in public, but. If you want to do that math, it can tell you. Now, we do have a little bit of loss just from, like, shipping. Right, right. A few small cracks here and there, some yeah. scratches. But at the end of the day, if we, get a, even if we got an 80% yield, that's far beyond what, you know, we could get in a normal supply chain with the way everything apparently is. So, just, um, well, more importantly, we're not, we're not putting a strain on any other supply chain that our hospitals and all are currently using. Right. We're creating our own we're new adding, supply adding chain. to the market, yeah. So we're increasing the supply that's actually available for everyone else. That's important. So, like, that's something to think about. If we are taking away medical grade stuff that medical manufacturers would be using, they can't use it. Right. But this is cheap. good stuff. This isn't cheap. Yeah. This isn't your mama's plastic. No, this, I mean, it's this is something cool. else. I don't know what this is. I think it's a PETG. This is what they use for pla uh, bottles, maybe. Yeah. For, like, plastic, like your Coca-Cola bottle. Yeah. And so this is a little bit thicker material, so I imagine that you know the Coca-Cola bottles, it's you know a, like a vacuum heat seal, some right. some sort of process like that. And, then they, boop, and so once it cuts, it drop out like that. Most of the time, we try to catch it beforehand, so we can just when you're not it. distracted. Yeah. So in, the, in in just that little tiny bit of time. Two minutes. Look at that. That's what twelve? Oh my god. Twelve. That's crazy. Yep. We got a full face cover. Ready to go. Bang bang right there and as you can see for the production of it you know there's a little bit of burning on the edge but ultimately the face is clear enough that you can read through it you can chart yeah you can have a conversation and then Pah. well because another thing is you got to consider you're not wearing a face shield all the time yeah. you're wearing a face shield when you need a face shield okay. and then you take it off that's, that's the waste right there yeah this is your waste that's all the waste that's coming out of this run so every all of everything in the little negative space, you know, yeah, you can't yeah. use that. But no. then like the little strip, we spend so, a little bit of time. So we're using yeah. as much of it as yeah. we can. We spend a little bit of time optimizing the layout, doing a few different tests. We actually adjusted the scale of these ever so slightly so that we could get twelve versus what nine? Seven. Yes, yeah, seven. So by tweaking these, you know, a quarter of an inch, right? We were able to get a twenty-five percent growth. By take, by taking them, just making them just a tiny bit smaller. Yeah, which ultimately and they're, they're still right. A full face. Right. Yeah. I have a long face, and it covers yeah. everything I need. And what time? What time is it right now? Well, after five. So in six hours, you're able to figure all this out. Get all this set up, get it going, get it where you can make 12 of them in just a little tiny bit yep, of time. A few failures. Right. Think, you know, the, well, the one challenge, like the video we posted of getting it off the truck. Right. If it wouldn't be for the crane, that would have never happened. Because, yes, there was a lift gate, but then how do you get it off of the pallet? And the lift gate is 2,000 pounds. And get it in the air and get it where you can and not it. And it just so happens to have all those stuff laying around. Yeah. And That's what we do. Yeah. Right. Stuff. Right. Use the, uh, the infrastructure of existing businesses. That's that, up. Retool and engage. So. so a lot of our other monument companies, the guys that have invested and gone ahead and upgraded to do laser engraving, they have all the equipment, they just don't know it yet. Right. So we're here to show you, repurpose what you have. 
That's just the beauty. This is what happened in World War II. It's exactly what happened is people started manufacturing right out of their own facilities, repurposing what they had. Right. We don't need China. We don't need specialty factories. We just need a little bit of good old American ingenuity. Well, that's awesome. Do you have anything else you want to show us or tell us about? Tell us more about your business. Well, right now we're, uh, we're, we're doing just appointments only, but we do monuments. We do granite. We provide caskets, urns, the whole nine yards. But uh, in, in this crisis and time of need, we're yeah. doing exactly what we do. Uh, we also, thanks to this laser, can really personalize and do anything and everything um, inside of it. And that's why we bought this, was to be able to help our community and do this. And right how, and how much was that? Uh, this is right around $55,000. $55,000, just for reference, the median income in the United States is $55,000. Yeah. So that's an entire year's income. And he's able to take this machine that he was able to invest in because local businesses were giving him money, local people were giving him money, and he's able to repurpose it to help save the world. That's it. Make you laser all the way. All right. What do you got there, Brad? So these are the little S hooks. So for the face shields, the yeah. band that goes around, these little S hooks that you can hook them on. So, so it doesn't dig into your ears and stuff like mine. Yeah, just hold, <laughs> yep, just holds it on there. And um, when you're yeah. doing a 12 hour shift wearing those masks, right? You know, these are these are great for those of us that aren't in the healthcare field, keeping our germs to ourselves. Right. So that that six to ten foot social distancing there, that's still something we need to do. But this keeps those germs in. But for our healthcare workers that are wearing these masks twelve hours a day, I think it's if you just put an elastic strap behind your ear for twenty minutes, it's gonna be um, raw. It sucks. Right. My wife and I are travel nurses. This is our profession. Before we came here, we know how uncomfortable PPE is. So those S hooks are a lifesaver. Oh, you're so you're a travel nurse. Yep. Oh my God, I have a friend of mine that's a travel nurse. Hey, shout out to Kevin. Uh, he, he's got all kinds of... those. Some of the most amazing people in this world are nurses. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. A most, one of the most selfless occupations you could ever have. So, is there, so is there anything that people in the area could do to help you right now? To help like your I, I business? You or? guys have done the most amazing thing is just getting the plastic. And I... A lot of people are asking questions about there's plenty of supply of funeral products. There's plenty of things on that end. The supply chain's fine there. For those that are looking for tombstones and stuff, we just need a few weeks. Just give us a breather so we can pump this stuff out for the people that are living. That's really important right now. So just our community's understanding that we're pushing pause on our operations as normal. So you're not so you're you're um, stopping. You're not even making income while you're doing this. No, we've we've pretty well stopped. Um, while this is going on uh, now we're still here to help families that need a casket or things like that for right it needs but those that can wait we ask that you wait we're just going to go through this get this stuff done get our community taken care of so that there's plenty of stuff for our healthcare workers because ultimately being safe and not having people die from this is our goal right uh, and especially our healthcare workers they're on the front line they need the proper equipment and to me that takes priority over just about anything else in the world. But if someone needs your help, you're more than happy to help them. Well, absolutely happy to help. Um, we just appreciate the patience while we're pumping this stuff out. What about you, Brad? Is there anything that people could do to help your business in the community? Honestly, for me, the biggest thing is figure out a way that you can help others. Like with my business, it's you know I'm a one man rodeo, and like you know, normally Saturdays are another twelve hour work day for me. Right. So I'm I'm up here helping John trying to get the stuff knocked out for my customers. They've been really good. Like, they're patient with me anyways. But I guess what I request is of those that can afford to donate, donate. If you can't donate and you can help some way that doesn't put anyone at risk, please do so. If it's you have, you know, if you have a box of exam gloves that you thought you needed two years ago and they're still good, absolutely donate them. Right. Anything that you have that could assist in the efforts between the healthcare workers, et cetera, just do it. What, be creative. Come up with ideas. Ask someone, hey, what could we do to help a pain point of yours? Right. That's that's how this connection between the you know the four of us came down is we had a problem. You offered the problem. I said, hey, I can offer my experience in manufacturing. Right. My network as a business owner and as a, you know, as a Rotarian and then pull this together. What's a Rotarian? Um, so Rotary Club is. Oh, okay. Rotary Club. Yeah. Okay. So I'm the president-elect for the Columbia County Club. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. So that's um, 
So this is a this this type of stuff. This is Rotarian 101. Right. This is what we do. So it was just another rinse and repeat for me and figure out how can I take the resources and uh, the people that I know and have connection with, marry it with the problem, get a solution. Awesome. So. Awesome. Great. Well, hey, we really, really, really appreciate your help. Uh, what's your website, Brad? NaughtyLogWoodworks.com. NaughtyLogWoodworks.com. Yep. Uh, yep, got it. And Jonathan? And we're uh, C and M Augusta. C and M Augusta. Is that that is that C Augusta. and M with like the symbol and? Uh, all spelled out and. So it's like candom. Candom Augusta. <laughs> <laughs> so C, then the word and, and then the letter M Augusta yep. dot com. That's us. And that's so that's caskets and more. Yep. All right. I I really appreciate you guys' help. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, be safe. Please stay at home, and uh, be kind to everybody. If you can't interact with every single interaction in your life right now with love, don't interact. Period. Hundred percent. That's a good. That's a good. All right. So I'll see you. Bye.